Hello my friends and welcome to my final video covering my 2023 skincare routine. Tonight's routine is the acne prevention with a little bit of anti-aging routine. In case anyone is new and stumbling upon this channel, I do deal with hormonal acne. So this is the routine where I really kind of up the ante a bit around a certain time of the month. And in case you're wondering why there's quite a few routines, it's because I do my own version of essentially skin cycling, as do many other skincare enthusiasts, and we have for quite some time. If you missed anything in the routine, I will have it all linked below in a playlist. And as per usual, we have yet another routine that is overall pretty affordable. There is one element to this routine that is of course optional, and it is a bit pricier, but it's optional. And as always, timestamps and links are in the description box below. I think that's enough of an intro. Are you ready to get into this routine? I really am. I apologize in advance if my voice sounds really tired. I've had a really long day, another one of my super long days. So uh, I'm a bit tired, but I am looking forward to using this cleanser right here that I am holding upside down because I have to, I'm almost out of it. Who knows that struggle? I'm not gonna double cleanse tonight because I'm not wearing any makeup. Yeah, look at all that progress we had for anybody that remembers the bad breakout that I had recently. Mm. A good skincare routine leads to great progress. But I'm not wearing makeup aside from my Blink Tubing Mascara, which is super easy to remove with just water. And uh, I wore a Korean sunscreen, which is also pretty easy to remove. I don't need to double cleanse. So we're just gonna go in with this cleanser. This is technically, wait for it, technically an exfoliating cleanser, but a very gentle one. It is so gentle, it is made of fruit seeds. I feel like, as somebody who has to be cautious with chemical exfoliators, I feel like I've just been team physical exfoliants for a long time, kind of in defense of how they're just not all St. Ives. Although you know what? I actually do keep a bottle of St. Ives around because that is a very good foot scrub. But for my face, I really do like a nice, gentle, physical exfoliant. You know, not every night, not every single night, just from time to time, I really enjoy how they feel and what they do for my skin. And this one from Rosen, this has been a favorite for a long time because it is so affordable. So I'm gonna go rinse off and tube off this mascara and I will be right back. I'm back and I must confess to you all, washing my face with this in my hair was interesting. It was about as much fun as, do you remember those pants that came and went from being a real hot thing where, where they had this tie, you tie all the way around your waist and you just kind of keep wrapping it. I bought that because I thought it looked so cute and the very first time I ever had to find a washroom with those pants, I immediately discovered why that was not a great idea. You gotta find the strings and you gotta hold on to both of them for dear life. Anyway, sorry for the tangent. We're gonna do the expensive part of this routine next. It is, you might have guessed it, my LED mask. I guess it's been almost two years for me of using some form of LED mask. I will tell you that for the context of this video, the acne prevention anti-aging routine, the Dr. Dennis Gross mask wins by a hair because even though there's elements of this that I don't like, it does have the setting where you can run both red and blue simultaneously. That is truly something that I appreciate that only this mask has. Otherwise, there's pros and cons with all of them. They're all pricey. I mean, don't get them if you're not gonna use them. That's the most important part with any of these devices. But I will tell you an updated pro if you can take me seriously for a moment here. I had no qualms about doing LED therapy for about the first year. Now that I'm, you know, two years into it, I am glad this only lasts for three minutes. It, it just, it started to get tedious at about a year and a half. I love the results, but I'm glad it's, it's wham bam done. I think I would talk myself out of a 10 to 20 minute LED session. I think I would talk myself out of it. I, I would say, I, I got too many other things to do. So I appreciate this. I do have to hold the Dr. Dennis Gross mask to my face because the strap is atrocious. Some of you are probably not taking me seriously. So I'll just come back to you when this three minute timer is up. I have made a decision. I have three LED masks and I've finally made a decision for myself. If I had to repurchase one of the three again, I would go with the Dr. Dennis Gross because again, you can run red and blue at the same time. 
If you do not have acne, I would not buy this one. The strap, the warranty thing, I would not repurchase this. I would go with the Cure or the Luster Skin one, which actually has better wavelengths. Otherwise, the truth is there are concerns with using blue light around your eye area. That's why you see me wear the goofy looking goggles every time I do it. So you just don't need it if you don't deal with acne. But let's move on. I'm gonna use the Nambuzin number no. three toner tonight. I do not yet have an opinion on this aside from the smell. I honestly feel I was so underprepared for how this would smell. Not a single one of you told me that this smells exactly like my grandmother's house. <laughs> Surely one of you knew that. Surely, I'm kidding. I hope you know I'm kidding. <laughs> I love the texture of it, but I can't really tell you anything about results until the end of this month. As you know, Nambuzin is our brand of the month. So more than. I also, initially I grabbed a different product to use in tonight's routine, and that is, unsurprisingly, the COSRX Advanced Nail 96 Mucin Power Essence, one of my long running favorites. But I'm testing this brand, so I should stick with what I'm testing. However, I will link you my review on that if you'd like more. I, I think everybody's heard of it at this point. You know, the COSRX is a product, the Snail Mucin Essence is a product that everybody's heard of. And I think, I think at this point, most people know where they stand with it, maybe? Am I wrong? I could be very wrong. Maybe it's just that every skincare enthusiast knows where they stand with it. But yeah, it works for a lot of people, for me, it's anti-inflammatory, which I really appreciate in my routine, but you know, some people do have allergies to snail mucin. Moving right along, I am going to be using a combination of serums tonight, both from The Ordinary. The Ordinary's Multipeptide Eye Serum, as well as what is now known as the Multipeptide Serum. Mine still says Buffet on it. I am just about out of this product. I don't think I'll immediately repurchase it, as I do have some other peptide serums. But I wanted to include it in this video because the reality is, even though the texture of this is not my absolute favorite, I do feel like it, it can pill. It's, you know, a little thick and goopy in its texture, but I feel like it works just as well as my much more expensive peptide serums. And there's something to be said for that. You know, you've gotta be okay with the ordinary slightly funky textures, but if you are, you get great results from their products. Oh, I should set this aside because you all want a peptides video and I need to make sure to show you the texture. So I'll try not to finish that just yet. The eye serum, it's pretty runny, but I'm making it work. I'm making it work. I think, it, I think it's a great product. It's kind of expensive though for the ordinary, but I'm using peptides tonight as I really like to pair peptides with my retinoid. And tonight is indeed a retinoid night. But I am getting ahead of myself because the next step is actually moisturizer. Who guessed it? Who knew that we are going to be doing a retinoid sandwich? Yep, we absolutely are. I'm using a little bit of this Beauty of Joseon Dynasty Cream. On my dry skin type, this is kind of a lightweight moisturizer. I guess I can see how it's a little more heavy for some, but yeah, for, for dry skin, it's, it's practically a light cream. <laughs> Oh, how much skin type changes your preferences on moisturizer. Oh, it really does. And since I used an eye serum tonight, we're just gonna go ahead and take this cream all around my eye area. Good enough, you know, eye cream, eye serum, they're both optional. You may or may not want one or the other. As always, skincare is something that is very personal to everybody. Everybody has different opinions and that's okay. I am about to give you a best kept secret. Kind of a, a new discovery, really. Don't worry, I don't gatekeep skincare secrets. We've essentially done a whole skincare routine. We did cleanser, toner, serum, moisturizer. We, we did a whole skincare routine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk away for about 30 solid minutes. Because I am indeed doing a retinoid sandwich tonight. We're using Differin, which is Adapalene. And the idea is you put this lightweight moisturizer on before you add the Adapalene so that it doesn't block absorption, but it slows down the process so your skin can handle it more easily. I have also found that walking away and coming back to apply my Adapalene 30 minutes later, for some reason, that really helps me with the irritation aspect. I kid you all not, I discovered this by accident by just letting too much time pass between having put on my moisturizer and getting around to doing my retinoid. And I, I just realized, wait, this is, 
it's actually really helping. But in the meantime, I wanted to tell you about kind of my other anti-acne routine, and that is using azelaic acid. I really like azelaic acid. Some people are even able to use a gentle 10% azelaic acid serum before they use the retinoid. For me, I've actually found it to be a little bit too drying. So around this time of the month, what I do is I just start alternating this and this at night. Not necessarily just this product. This one was gifted to me and I do like that it's both 14% azelaic acid and also contains a little bit of salicylic acid, which is another ingredient that can help with fighting acne. So I do like this one, but the reality is you can go with Peach Slices has a nice, affordable option of azelaic acid, and Costa Baja, super affordable. Again, kind of not my favorite for texture, it's more of the ordinary type of texture, but it gets the job done. So lots of options for azelaic acid. It's a great ingredient both for helping to fight inflammation and also helping with hyperpigmentation. So basically, for about one to two weeks out of the month, this is primarily what I alternate at night. And then when we are through that period of time, we can get back to doing more of the barrier boosting PM routine. As always, the point of my routines isn't to tell you what to do, it's to show you the kind of options that you have, especially if you're somebody like me who does have a difficult skin type. Again, I am gonna wait 30 minutes, so I'm gonna tidy up my space. I never get to do this. I always have a gigantic mess in front of me, so I'm gonna tidy up my space, and I'll come back to you to finish out this routine. I'm back. I was checking the tracking on my Yes Style order. I think I need an intervention. I need to stop checking the tracking every hour. It doesn't update every hour. Why do I check it every hour? It's so close. It's in Georgia. It's in Georgia. Why am I still waiting? Let's finish out this routine. As I've mentioned, I did switch, that's upside down. I did switch to a different Adapalene gel just to kind of see if there was any difference between this and the La Roche-Posay Effaclar Adapalene. Honestly, I don't feel like there is. I'll keep working through them, but I, I don't feel it so far. Anyway, you only need a pea size amount, just a pea size, anything more than that, and you will get more Adapalene. I feel like this concept of percentages can kind of be confusing for people, but when you're talking about percent, there's still a quantity to this. So if you overdo it, you could be using much too much of your retinoid. To spread it, I like to kind of dot it on all of my fingertips. This actually really helps me out a lot. And that's it. We can just apply it all over my face, a little bit down my neck. I did want to comment on the anti-aging uh, aspects of Adapalene. I feel like I get this question all the time. There is some research suggesting that Adapalene may be a good anti-aging ingredient, kind of similar to uh, your stronger retinoid, other stronger retinoid options. <laughs> I would still say if you're interested in going all the way to prescription retinoic acid, feel free to do that. That is where you see by far the most evidence, but something that is nice about Adapalene is that it is over the counter. And again, if we have the exact same skin type where you also have adult acne like I do, oh, Adapalene, Adapalene is wonderful. But honestly, I hated it initially. I really did. It was really drying for me initially. I'm telling you, this, this layering, this every other night thing, as well as uh, the retinoid sandwich, as well as the 30 minute wait time, it, it all helps so much. It is no longer irritating, actually, at all to me. I do think it's interesting that different people respond so differently to Adapalene. Some people have said they can just throw it on with, with barely even thinking about it. I cannot do that. <laughs> I'm happy for you though, that sounds wonderful. And that's it, I'm gonna wait about five minutes before I apply my moisturizer. I will admit to you, this is you know not a complicated routine, but because I am doing some waiting periods in here, it does, it does make it last a little longer to do. But again, that's what works for me, and again, a lot of people do not struggle at all with the Dapoline. And our very last step is a hefty and soothing moisturizer, and so I'm gonna go with my Numbuzzin, Number two, Sika Ceramide Repair Cream. Let, let me just, let me show you how this comes out of this tube. Just, just look, look at that. Do you see how thick this is? I was not expecting this. I don't feel like I've ever seen a Korean moisturizer that is like this. 
then again, I guess that's actually true of Western moisturizers also, but I feel like <laughs> probably because we use so many actives in the West, we also give so much attention to the real hefty occlusive moisturizers, the, the Biosant Omega creams. But look at this. Do you see how similar it is to that? It does kind of, it almost has that slightly more matte finish as well. And that's it, my friends. We have finished all of my major skincare routines. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you all next time.